said in the past that when you're hoarding and cluttering, it really is an emotional issue. And basically what happens is the stuff, all the stuff that we see around us, basically is the physical manifestation of that emotional thing that, that's driving us to collect. So let's talk a little bit about ways that uh, we can deal with it. Now later on as we go on, we're going to talk about a multitude of ways, and each week we'll cover some other ways you know, that you can deal with it. But right now, these are three that people tell me all the time. They said, let nature take its course. Well, you know, they say there's such a thing as spontaneous generation, so maybe we sometimes we believe that it just sort of happened. And sometimes, I guess, in reality, we're not aware of how much stuff we're collecting until there is too much stuff. Another way is, you know, wait until you die and let the family take care of it. I can't tell you how many people said that. You know, I, I just don't have the energy or the, or the stamina to deal with it. So, you know what? When I die, my family will take care of it. The only problem is, if you have too much stuff, what happens is your family becomes alienated and really can't deal with it because of the fact of the emotional tie to you. And the third thing, which really does make the most sense, although sometimes it really is the hardest, is basically to take the responsibility and deal with it. Now, some of the questions are, how do you do it? Well, one thing you have to realize is there is time needed. But I have to tell you, I'm from the school that a little bit at a time, you know, we'll get there. I mean, let's look at the rabbit and the hare. Look at the rabbit and the turtle. The turtle won the race. Slow and steady gets there. Slow and steady is generally the way to go. You know, there is that rule that you do 90% of your work in the first 50% of the time because you have more energy, you're more enthused, you're thinking about getting it done, so you have a tendency to work harder in the beginning. So, you know, I often tell my clients, don't worry about getting it all done. Let's worry about getting started. And if you set aside an hour to do it, and somebody calls and wants you to go do something, you know what? Go and do it. But remember, you still owe yourself a certain amount of time to do it. You know, get the 90% done. Don't worry about the other 10%. If you hadn't started it, you, hadn't, you wouldn't have gotten anything done. So getting some of it done is better than getting none of it done. There are different times, kinds of hoarders and collectors. Now there are many, many different schools of thought, but these are the four that uh, I have talked most about and have learned most about and people have told me most about. Now I'm going to give you the names and then we're going to talk a little bit about each one. So be thinking about, you know, do you have these traits or do you know someone who has these traits? Okay, we have the collector, the concealer, the accumulator, the tosser, and in reality, there are a whole bunch of us, a whole lot of us, that are combinations of all of these. And all of these are fine as long as not taken to extreme. Now, the first one we have is the collector. You know, their collections are never complete. They always are looking for that extra piece to add to it. They tend to become obsessive about it. It becomes so very important to them. They could be a good flea market operator, though. The, you know, because they have so much stuff. And what they could do is they could get rid of some stuff as they add stuff. So at least getting rid of some stuff, you know, will give them more room, quote unquote, you know, to add some things to it. And they have a tendency to earn different types of collections. Now, my stepson, Kevin, is a single man, and I have to tell you, he has about seven automobiles now. About four of them are registered, and he uh, does drive them occasionally. The rest of them are in different uh, periods or different, time, different areas of needing to be worked on. But he's single. Now, I'm not going to say he's either right or wrong, and I never will tell anyone whether they're right or wrong. But this is where he likes to invest his money. Now, do I think it's excessive? It would be excessive for me, but maybe for him it's not. So what I'm saying is no matter what you're doing, if it's feeding something in you and you are happy, you are content, 
which is very important because a lot of times I find that hoarders are not content. But if you know someone who is truly content with what they have, then it's okay. Uh, we have the concealer. This, I have to admit, this, this is where I fall into it a little bit because I'm similar to, a, to an accumulator. I love all types of storage containers. Anyone who knows me knows that I have a big tendency to have baskets. However, if you walk into my house, it's very neat. But don't open any drawers. Don't look under, you know, any tables, uh, under the bed. I mean, I have a tendency to use a lot of baskets with lids and to keep things. Now, that's a concealer. I have trouble deciding sometimes what to toss because everything is important to me. But I'm very neat and very organized, so I have a tendency to reorganize it. Accumulator. You know, that's your basic pat wrap. And unfortunately, this is where a lot of the actual quote unquote clinical organizers or clinical uh, organizers and clinical hoarders have a tendency to fall. They're a basic pat rat. They feel all their stuff has value. It doesn't matter if it's broken, doesn't matter if it's food and it's out of date. It just doesn't matter to them. Everything has value. Uh, Dr. Phil at one point talked about a lady who had, uh, what was it, I think it was five storage bins. Now, she was, her health was not good and she really did need to get some health insurance and to get some of her health problems taken care of. However, she had so, much st so many storage containers that she was paying for, she didn't have the money. Now, the reality is they were her, that was her parents' stuff. And when people die, you know, some people are so attached that they keep all the stuff. A lot of the stuff didn't work, but it didn't matter to her. It was her parents' things. You know, collections provide that sense of ability. And they feel they don't need more stuff or more space. They just need more stuff and more space to put it in. They never, ever, ever have enough stuff. And that leads us down the road. Now, unfortunately, we have a tosser. And unfortunately, the tosser then becomes a person who comes into the house and wants to be helpful and starts throwing things away. Now, if you are a collector, let's say, or an accumulator, and you live with a tosser, it becomes very, very difficult. There are stages of, of separation. You know, as I said, it is an emotional thing. It's, it's an emotional part of you that's not being fed, and the stuff that you have is just the physical manifestation of that stuff. So when you are pushed to get ready, you know, to get rid of it, and you're not ready to get rid of it, basically what happens is you have a problem. And just like in the death of a person, you're looking at the death of your belongings. And you know, a lot of times our belongings define us. We let them define us. So when we let them define us, what happens is we actually truly do go into the stages of grief. The five stages of grief. The first one, denial. I do not have, you know, too much stuff. It's mine. Anger, it's mine, don't touch it. I need it. Uh, bargaining. Uh, Maybe I could consolidate it if I have to, but I don't want to. But if I have to, then comes the depression. Where, 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 where did it all come from? You know, I, I, I it just, it, 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 it just happened. Where did it all come from? And then acceptance. You know, all right, too much is too much. It's really creating a lot of problems in my life. So I guess I have to do something with it. So if you really look at it that way, when you're speaking to someone who has the hoarding and clutter, you know, gene or the hoarding and clutter uh, problem or situation going on in their life, remember, they're not doing it because they really want to do it. They're doing it because they're living through some sort of need that isn't being filled. So we have a tendency to let that emotional part of us take the physical manifestation of stuff. Signs that it's ready to stop collecting. And we can talk more about that.
You don't care how it's displayed. We're going to do this. You look at it. You don't look at it any often. You don't. You don't care about it. You know, you're starting not to care about it. You pack it away and start a new collection. Sometimes we do that. It's up in the attic. You haven't looked at it in years. You know, somebody else in the family might be able to enjoy it. And the last one, you just have no more room. What are you going to do? 